The Meg versus the Bloop. Please, God. Tonight, the biggest. I I I I don't know if I have the energy to watch the Meg versus the Bloop. Why is the Bloop shown as a giant anglerfish? Before the video starts, I just want to quickly announce that I have made a Patreon. Uh, I'm offering tons of awesome stuff like uh, Discord roles, behind the scenes content, the ability to chat with me and ask questions. Because if you didn't know, I get dozens of Twitter DMs daily asking fish questions or asking me to interview for a project or something of that sort. And I just can't, can't go through all of those. Um, so this will allow me to actually go through the people who actually really need those questions, answer those projects done. Uh, or if you just have silly questions, hopefully uh, this will be a good way to get a stable income for me. So if you're interested, the link will be in the description. If not, all good. Keep watching the free content. Fiercest shark in history will face the blue, a mysterious creature from the ocean depths. So in this world, the bloop is just an anglerfish with a second row of teeth. Mysterious creature from the ocean depths. The yeah, the bloop was literally a noise of an iceberg scraping across the bottom of the ocean. So we've got an extinct shark versus the noise of an iceberg scraping. Megalodon was an ancient marine predator, a giant shark feared by all aquatic life for millions. Petting on the iceberg. Megalodon. Had Honestly, if I had to, if someone told me that an iceberg was going to fight a megalodon, I'd probably vote on the iceberg too. No competitors in the oceans. It was at the top of the food extinct chain. shark versus Turns vibrating particles don't even realize how lucky they are because this monster went extinct about three million years ago although people can't know for sure if it's really gone <laughs> the ocean is only five percent explored what? it's possible hasn't this exact channel said larger numbers five percent is the lowest estimate i've ever seen I don't think I've ever seen someone claim only 5%. Usually it's like 10 to 15. Sometimes they say I eight. Five is crazy. In the depths, Megalodon still terrifies all the Sir, yes, sir. And today, the colossal shark will fight against a world. Sorry, I think those were Sergeant Major fish. You can't disrespect Sergeant Major fish. You always have to salute them. The blue. Technically, that's just the name of the sound. The sound that oceanographers recorded in 1997. The creature that made it could be called a sea monster, a kraken, a beast from the deep. No one knows how. Does squid make noise? Squid and octopus. I'm sure they make noise, but I feel like they don't make any significant noise. So a scaled up octopus or squid would not really make a, a sound to the quality of the bloop, right? Because the bloop is obviously, and we know it's an iceberg, but let's say theoretically it is a large animal. The only really animals in the ocean that make noises there's some fish that like drum and stuff but that's not the same idea so really just like waves right or whales why can't i say that word whales so the bloop would just have to be a whale if it was anything can you make a noise if you squish them yeah probably a creature that can make such a sound could be dozens of times bigger than a blue whale no way the largest animal living in the world Point Nemo is used by many companies as a space garbage dump because of the long distance from land. Every year, satellites fall there. But the worst thing is that the coordinates of the fictional ancient city of Relay are near Point Nemo. No that way! That city was described in the books of author H.P. Lovecraft. Among the what does that have to do with anything? This large sea monster that's making iceberg sounds lives at the most remote point in the world in a abandoned lost city of legend? What? of Relay, the monster Cthulhu lives. Ah. Yeah, it sounds nothing like it looks. The chances of the Megalodon winning are small because Cthulhu is a demigod. <laughs> it has arms and legs, wings, and a head resembling a colossal... We've gone beyond science. There's no longer, like, I... I what, what am I supposed to commentate onto this? Cthulhu is a demigod. <laughs> yeah, this is an AI-generated video. I don't even... The Megalodon is five times smaller at about 60 feet or slightly less. Megalodon with a tiger Megalodon. shark patterning. Ooh, Interesting. A nice lunch for a monster shark. The shark weighs about 100 tons, like two tanks. The weight of Cthulhu is also unknown, but we can say with confidence that it can easily lift two tanks with its hands. <laughs> yeah, so its weight is unknown. You can't even take a guess at its weight, but it can for sure lift two tanks. I, what what measurements have happened to get to this point? Where is the statistics? Where do I find this data? Where do I find the math that was done to determine the strength of Cthulhu? 
Change its size and shape at will. Oh. It can be anybody from the size of a human to oh. the extent of a continent. Oh. It can morph sizes from a human to a literal continent. Also, could how is this even a fight? It can be the size of a continent. Hulu can spawn any number of limbs, but let's None of that is relevant. Let's not stray too far into fantasy. Cthulhu is an ancient wise being that is more than a million years old. It has secret knowledge and telepathy. Megalodon is primarily an animal that simply follows its instincts. One of the main advantages of any match is intelligence. So Cthulhu wins against the giant shark again. Wow. Who would have thought the Megalodon would be outsmarted by Cthulhu? <laughs> Literally God versus an extinct shark. Yep. Yeah, and waiting to awaken to start an apocalypse. <laughs> a shape-shifting demigod which can become the size of a continent versus a fairly large shark. <laughs> the more you guys put it in those terms, the dumber it sounds. Oops. Me versus my goldfish. <laughs> Therefore, all people in the world are interested in a megalodon victory. To support the shark, people send their ships to help. It's a what? bit unfair, but even now, Cthulhu wins. Wait, people send their ships in support of the Meg to fight Cthulhu? So this is like a Nash, like this is Jake Paul versus KSI level. Like everyone's watching this. We're all supporting a f extinct fish versus God. The monster can control people telepathically. Oh, of course it, it can. It gives an order to every sailor's brain and all the ships sail away from the battlefield. Meanwhile, as Cthulhu is distracted by the ships, what am I watching? has a chance. It's a there Friday are two night. Things in which the shark is it's a Friday a night. The first is speed. <laughs> the Megalodon a doesn't swim very fast. About 11 miles Why, per What hour. happened to the Meg? Oh my god, he got fucked up. Dude, Cthulhu... <laughs> is speed. Cthulhu done Megalodon fucked him up. Swim very oh my god. Rip... <laughs> Cthulhu really got his ass, god damn. Fast. Megalodon can maneuver around the green monster, and thanks to its smooth skin, slip out of the demigod's clutch. Smooth skin? Have you ever felt a shark? Their scales are literally teeth. Or their teeth are scales. Regardless, it's the same point. Behind <laughs> this is the video ever. Not the best, not the worst. This is the video ever. Cthulhu. The bite of a megalodon is considered one of the strongest among all creatures that have ever existed on Earth. Yet not stronger than literally fucking God. Such a jaw becomes an advantage in the fight against the bloop. One megalodon's bite is enough- I forgot it was the bloop. I forgot that the whole point of this video was the bloop. I thought we were watching Meg versus Cthulhu. We all just agreed that the bloop is Cthulhu at this point. I see. Cthulhu uses tentacles to grab its opponent. Megalodon is trapped and can't move. The bloop is going to pull the shark out of the water. It seems that the green monster will win the fight. But several unknown objects are approaching the place. <laughs> several MS Paint black triangles are approaching the, the site. Fight. The green monster is unique. It's one of a kind. But the Megalodon has offspring. Many no sharks way. from all over the ocean swim to help their relatives. Now <laughs> the sides are equal. Cthulhu. What? Cthulhu is literally God. Has the intelligence of God, the size of God, shape shifting, millions of years old. But the Meg has a bunch of friends, so it's an even fight. Who again uses telepathy to summon people to help. Hundreds of ships sail to the fight location. It orders them to open fire on the enemies. Dozens of sharks quickly swim around Cthulhu. It's impossible open to fire on the sharks? injure the green monster. Cthulhu uses its tentacles to catch each shark one by one. But the sharks work great as a team. Once one shark is captured, the other- This is literally that, what's that one question that people ask where it's like, would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or a thousand duck-sized horses? This is that question exactly. This is just a normal person versus a million sharks. It's literally God. Cthulhu rises to the air. Black clouds accumulate, thunder rumbles, lightning strikes everywhere, and a downpour begins. Cthulhu is in the sky directly over a group of megalodons. It has taken a short break. <laughs> Dude, bunch of sharks literally fucked up God to the point where he had to take a break. 
A satellite's falling, cutting through the storm clouds. Then another one. Cthulhu is not prepared for an attack of space debris. It dives into the water and retreats once more into the ruins of the ancient city. Megalodon wins with the last of its strength. Oh! How? The comments can't be happy about this. I've never seen the comments on these videos, but they can't be happy about this. <laughs> the first comment says it was actually an iceberg. This is the most ridiculous thing I've watched in my life. That was, um, upsetting, truly. Really.